Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here's today's host, Monica Profit. Hello, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. This is Monica Profit, and I'm here with Peter Hurley the co-founder of Shebangers, which is a really cool new NFT project. I think you're the first, you might be the first NFT project we've had on the podcast, actually. So welcome, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us. What? I'm the first. Oh my gosh. Mark, <laughs> that's so cool. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think so. I mean, maybe we had some sort of like obscure or something or other. No, I think that you're really the first real NFT dude. Wow. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. So we were catching up before this and, uh, and you were kind of giving me a little background, which is always like, yeah, it's a little bit here and there. You know, I never asked for too much background because I don't want it to be not, I don't know, real time and impromptu. And, you know, like if you have to tell a story twice, the second time you usually don't tell it as well. It just is that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or it sounds stuffier or more rehearsed. So, um, yeah, I think I, I would really love to dive into kind of how, how much do you feel like you know about NFTs and how long have you even been dealing in the NFT world? Because you're a photographer and now you're a photographer NFT person. So what does that mean to you? How long have you been doing it? It means a lot to me because I'm on the precipice of this thing. Like I'm like, I haven't been doing it long. Uh, I have a, a team behind me that the, my other co-founder, Vadim, came to me. We had worked together previously. I'm a, I'm a photographer. I'm a portrait photographer in New York and, and uh I have a, a community called the Headshot Crew, and he's one of my photographers in it. And he came to me, he said, look, I've been studying this NFT for forever. We need to do a photography-inspired collection. And I'm going to find an artist, and we're going to do something cool. And I was like, and I had been hearing this NFT, 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 and I'd been starting to say, okay, no fungible token what does this mean what is and i started to go down the path of trying to learn as much as i could and absorb as much as i could about them and uh it just coincided it's like you know you you start to see something and then it's everywhere i was like it was one of those things he spoke about it and i was like all right, all right. i mean i had heard about it like all week last week i was like now you're telling me this and you want me to get involved done so and i think he was looking at it as a couple of things we have a relationship we've worked together before and he was putting a team together that's been incredible that i didn't have the ability to put together so it was just great to to team up with him but i have a community behind me and um nobody had taken the photo industry into uh the nft space yet as a collection other photographers obviously i think it's one of the best things that ever happened for photographers can you imagine you got a residual on on uh selling an nft as a photographer that you never had before that's 10 percent or whatever attached to it's phenomenal for an artist i think that's a whole nother uh conversation and my goal was to get photographers acclimated to the space as i am you know so i'm learning as i go enjoying every minute of it and uh when we dropped the collection it was just it's excitement you know and and putting it all together and now uh i think it coincided very i mean i i kind of like we should have done it sooner <laughs> like we should have jumped on this like even sooner i wish we did but um but we're at we're good we're, timing's great and right in the middle of us dropping everything facebook went to meta and i was like this is amazing because i had never heard the word metaverse and now i'm creating one this is unbelievable so it's just excitement for me and um an extension of my brand in a way and and but just bringing photographers and creators into into something cool and everybody loves the artwork so that was really the driver behind this for me i mean that's the key part right you can't just put out crappy who knows what kind of images and be like oh i mean that's just that seems a little if it works, it works, but it seems a little gimmicky, you know, like for people, I, I have a long 20 year history in the arts. I was a practicing artist and arts administrator for over 20 years uh, before I went down just the only entrepreneur path and said, art brain, I'll be back in five to 10 years. I'm going to go stop being a starving artist. I'll be back. And so uh, either oh, I'll come back and we'll God. still be starving, no harm, no foul, or we won't. And we can go back to what we were doing. How about that? So my art brain's like, 
when are you coming back? It's like the child has just been like left off at the grocery store and I'm hoping that foster care has been going, being good to it. You know, we'll, we'll catch up when uh, you're 18. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, you say you wish you had hopped on this sooner. And uh, I don't know, man, I gotta say being, being early is a lot like, it looks a lot like being wrong, you know? And um, yeah. so maybe, maybe your timing is just perfect because I, I don't know, perfect. when did you guys actually launch this? That's a good question. Maybe it's perfect. Just a couple months ago. I mean, not even a couple months ago. When did we drop it? I forget. I, my brain's mush with how busy we've been. Um, I don't know our exact drop day. I don't remember, but my schedule's so crazy. Like going into the holidays and everything was so nuts. I think it was in, I don't know. It must have been a couple months ago. Um, must have been a couple months ago. Anyway, so was it was it I, before I Halloween like or after did. Halloween? Do you remember that? <laughs> it was after Halloween. I believe okay. it was after Halloween. I think we had a pre-sale going on, maybe around Halloween. I don't know. I should know this stuff, but I just, I'm just a busy human. So I have a bunch of uh, different, different things going on. So it's just, this is, this is another thing that's taken up a lot of my time, which I'm enjoying actually. So, so I know that you're pretty much the, you're the pretty face. You're the mouthpiece of this organization. And you've got a bunch of these tech guys, this team kind of behind you doing like the stuff, right? You've got the nerd, the nerders nerding out and saying, we got it ready. And you're like, okay, I'll tell people then, right? Is that kind of the, I know those structures well. I've been that person in those structures. I, I, I we have a we have a bunch of Telegram stuff going on, and we have a bunch of we're global. So the 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 actual artist Sergey's in in the Ukraine. So he developed did ever did all the work to get these things going, which is I thought was amazing. And I just I'm just so crazy about them. But we've got a whole development team in uh, in uh, Russia, and so they're speaking in in Russian in our telegram. And there's like all this talk that I don't even know about, but I'm on the thread and I'm like, this is crazy. I was like, oh, let them do all that <laughs> stuff. Let me just figure out my end of it and, and uh, be the face of it and, and help um, bring awareness to it. So that's what we're doing. We're just bringing awareness to a really cool community that we're building. That's awesome. So speaking of the community that you're building, one of the things that you mentioned was this sort of added utility. So it's not just, do you think this is pretty? You should buy it. And guess what? When you buy it or sell it, the artist keeps getting a piece of it. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Like it's only right, but there we go. But in addition, you it sounds like you guys have plugged in some other inherent value here, which is interesting to me from an NF, a pure NFT perspective. My, my pure technical brain is like, oh, interesting crossover of use case. So can you tell me a little bit about this the metaverse that you're now foraying into? Well, so far, I mean, we, the, each, each shebanger that's purchased uh, gets a plot in, the, in our metaverse that we're building. We just announced, we just had a press conference the other day and announced it. So we're going to give them a little plot where they can, they can have an actual gallery. Not only they could put your, their shebanger on the wall, they could build it out, they could put their own artwork on the wall. Um, and we've got different utilities, like they can have different things in the town. I'm going to be the mayor. It's called Shebangersville. <laughs> and the mon we're using, we're creating a um, currency called the Shabuck. So they'll be able to use Shabucks in this, in Shebangersville. It, it's just all so crazy and out of this world to me. Um, you know, I have uh 18 year old twins they're about 19 actually Whoa. and like they might understand all this stuff and they came to me the other day and they were like dad our friends are telling us about your nft how i was like what your friends know what, what's going on here and they're they the, uh, just all i care about is that my kids think i'm cool i'm like that's, all, that's oh good, good luck with that they've made it through their teenage years and they still think you're cool that's kind of like that's almost like solving world hunger how on earth did you do that <laughs> <laughs> Well, and if we, then with Roblox and, and uh, Minecraft and stuff being used to this stuff and the upcoming generation being used to this and now my generation saying, what the heck is a meta? What? Yeah. Uh, and then me going into, I'm actually getting calls from companies saying that are in the photography space saying, what are you up to? And I'm like, I'm so glad you reached out, you know, and I think it's really cool. I think the awareness is going up and I think brands are starting to say, all right, we've got to look at this. And, and there's, I was just uh, in a meeting where this this woman came in and she said her friends had just got a job with an NFT and she uh, working in a company on their NFT project and has a whole team underneath her already of of all of this. So I think yep. that this is is a huge thing that people need to over. I think you know obviously the more and more times you hear NFT, people are going to be curious and find out what it, what what it is, and to be as far as I know, we're the first community. Um, driven collectible that's photo industry related 
for creatives and and filmmakers and stuff like that. So we're we're really excited about it. And the little guys have these little cameras on their head. They're, the collectible end of it is cool, but the utility that we've attached to it. So I run the Headshot Crew, which is my coaching platform and referral engine for Headshot specialists globally. And we've got 20,000 members in it. And I coach about 1,500 in my coaching program right now. And what we did was we start, I had Shabucks in there for the past couple of years. And I didn't even realize that I was going to be able to take those Shabucks that people have been collecting and put them into the metaverse. So that's what we're doing. Number one. Number two, I do workshops all over the globe. So when we dropped, we had, I told anybody, I said, if you own three Shabangers and you're one of the first three people that, that ask, I'm going to invite you to one of my workshops. So I have a studio in Burbank. And I did a workshop there and three people who had owned Shebangers were invited and then they came and they loved it. And it was amazing. So we're attaching different utilities like that to it. There's also the sponsors that I work with are also um, helping us out. And we've been like, I designed a lighting setup. So I'm big into a lot of different things, but my gear is very important to me. So I'm sponsored. I'm a Canon Explorer of light. So I use all Canon gear. But I, for my lighting, I work with Westcott and I designed a, a lighting that for um, obviously photo and video called the Peter Hurley Cinecate. And we gave a Cinecate, one, a Cinecate was attached to one of the Shebangers as well. And it's a $55, $5,500 uh, studio kit. So we also are, gave away a EOS R5, which is the camera I shoot, which is like a $5,000 camera. So there's a lot of utilities attached to these. Each uh, person that was in on the pre-sale got like a signed poster from me attached as one of the utilities. And they also get their plot of land in Shebangersville. So there's more to come. It's just, it's just starting and my head spinning. It's great. That, that's a lot to be doing. So, okay. In terms of I have, I have like technical questions to ask you. I'm not sure it, this is going to make sense, but I know because you're new to this. I mean, geez, you're two, three, four months into this. That's not very much. So do you know if you are on the Ethereum network? Yeah, we're on Ethereum. Okay, yeah. just checking. Uh, so, and also, are you are you like white labeled? Are you like, this is not an open C technology. Is it your own NFT platform? Or was it white labeled other, uh, other technology no, no, behind it, that? It's our own platform, but the secondary market is selling on open C. Got it. Yep. That's the way to do it. Okay. So I'm just trying to get, because this is a very fast, quick, quick to launch kind of a thing. And I'm wondering, wow, how, how fast did this go? And how did it, how to get this kind of gas behind it, you know, so fast. The team is crazy. Like when they say, when the metaverse came out and I was like, okay, so look, go get the plot in Decentraland or Sandbox, just get it now, get one in both. And they're like, no, we're going to make our own. I yeah. was like, hello. We are yeah. okay. Hey, make our own. So we got a we we hired a team and now we're making our own. So, so what's exciting. the what's the um what's kind of price point for a shebanger that gets you this access to a piece of your own metaverse? Well, we, we sold them at first for 0.09. That was the that was the through the site and the secondary market is what it is. So it just depends on the day when you go in there. What's an average for like the appreciation or depreciation from 0.09 ETH to where, what are things averaging I at now in the secondary it's market? Like around 0.06 now, maybe. Okay. On OpenSea. You can go okay. and take a look. And every time, you know, obviously we have to get the metaverse built and all this stuff is happening, which takes time. So I think that that sure. is a reflection on the price and stuff like that. But we are oh, working sure. and we are yeah. making stuff happen. That's amazing. That is just amazing. I mean, having your kids come in and tell you about your own NFTs that they heard from their friends is like, that is kind of a, <laughs> that that's like a merit, that should be a merit badge in the Boy Scouts of Parenthood, you know? <laughs> well, they thought I was cool because I got the blue check on Instagram. I was like, but the NFT thing I think is cooler. <laughs> I was like, the fact totally. that their friends are talking about my NFT is cooler than that. I was like, all right. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, so who do you feel like our other like, who have you looked at being new to the space? Have you looked at other NFT or NFT platforms or initiatives and been like, oh, that's a good idea, but I, I like what they're doing. It's really cool what they're doing. We're going to do something like that. Or no, 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 we're going to do it super differently. But like, just as you kind of done a tertiary sort of view, what have you seen in the landscape of NFTs around you that's either been inspirational or has been like, ooh, danger, red flag, not doing that? Uh, I mean, we're looking at everything to see what the, what the next move is, you know, we're trying to take the right steps. I think the thing that a lot of the people in the NFT space now are like, oh yeah, I want to get in on that so that I can 
sell it on OpenSea for a ton of money, you know, and then we have our discord going. And then those people who are ready for the flip are like, Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing now? And I'm yep. like, I'm yep. in a marathon. You're in a sprint buddy. Yeah. Like, this is yeah, a yeah, yeah. photography based community. I think the community is what it, what is going to, what is going to really make this thing thrive. Yep. And it's a photo community. So when I talk in the discord, I'm like, I'm going to talk ph photography. And then there's people in there, like the guy who won the, the flex kit, which is 5,500 bucks, like contact me. He's like, Hey, can I get ETH for that? Because, because I'm not a photographer. I was like, well, why, you know, you bought a collectible that's for photography and the sponsors are giving us this stuff. So now I've got the team, all my people that are photographers are like, wait a minute, I'm going to, I'm going to go grab that NFT from the guy and get a deal on the flex kit. I was like, great. I'll ship it to you tomorrow. Where do you go? Grab it. Go that's grab cool. It on that's really cool. So it's, the value is in there. The utilities aren't done. We don't know where they're going. So the fact that our holders are actually a lot of people are holding them because they don't know what direction we're going. The thing yeah. that I think everybody understands is that it's going to take time. Yeah. And they, and they just have to know that we're not a flash in the pan and we're not, we're not running away from this with, and I, I'm basically here um, building it out the best I can. And I think it's going to be a long-term, well, it is going to be a long-term project that I'm enjoying yeah, and the space, yeah. just being in the space is just, I mean, I just missed a drop today that I'm like, so pissed about. <laughs> I just didn't click the button. I was like, it happens. What can you do? Oh, man. Oh, man. I sold out in like one, 10 seconds and I missed it. But what can you do? Well, next time. I'm sure there'll be a next time. You know, it's it's a yeah. it's a really, when I talk to people about crypto investing, like even it's just like in, in actual just cryptocurrencies, right? Not even NFTs, but people will say, oh, but you know, where's the market? And I'm too late and I'm too early. And it's like, no, the, the global market, only 5% of the global market of the globe, of the globe owns any cryptocurrency. And a few years ago, like four years ago, it was 0.2 to 0.3%. So you're not late. <laughs> you're, you're not late to no. anything, you know, but you do have to think about the timeline. I mean, I tell people, buy it and look away and don't look back for three years. If you look away, you know, over three years, no matter what, if it's already spiked and come back down, you've still, like if, you, if history tells you anything, it will have appreciated. So NFTs, I know they're very new. They're kind of like the ICO of 2021, 2022, but like they, if history tells us anything, yeah, there's going to be some flashes in the pan, but really if you're just willing to hold on for long enough, you're going to see some cool things happen and come back around and keep going. It's going to be great, you know? So I'm excited about this for sure. But uh, it's a weird time to see volatility hitting everything. And when you say, oh yeah, we released it for one and then the price is down since then, but that's a secondary market. And, you know, it's like, yeah, sure. People might've gotten in and thought, I don't know what I'm getting here. And then they, I don't know, then they, they decide to get out. That might affect the price. You don't know. Like, I, I think that Gary V did a an NFT and with his NFT drop, he had something that, I think he knew his, maybe he had a little more certainty that his entire audience would want, which is like, if you do this, you're going to get, you buy three of these or whatever, you're going to get, I think it's like a ticket to one of his events. And if you're a Gary Vee follower, you probably want that, right? But it's tough to be like, are you, are you selling to artists? Are you selling to other photographers? Are you selling to just NFT fans? Are you selling to crypto traders? Are you selling to hustlers? You don't, you know. Who are you selling to? Do they even want what you're giving them? Or is it like, oh, it's worth something. It's all got to be diluted or not diluted, but liquefied. You know, the liquidity has got to be there for them to see the value in it. They want the ETH. They don't want the thing. You know, it's, it's, it's weird, but exactly. yeah, it's kind of fascinating. It's, it's, it's awareness. I'm going out there talking to photographers and getting them fired up about it. And, and that's really that is who great. I think will be behind this project. You've been doing this with one artist. Are you looking to bring on multiple artists? Is there going to be a curatorial process to this? Or are you going to just, is it going to be just like you pick a friend that you think is cool and it's good enough? It's on brand. Like how is the curation and the visual of this going to really manifest? Well, we've talked about that right now. We have 2,500 of them that are going to be available in circulation when we, when we right now there's 13. 1500 out there and then on the on the secondary market that with the ability to go on the secondary market and then we have we have to mint the the rest of the 2500 and then when the when that happens and when shebangersville opens um we will be creating more and it, we, it's yet to be seen but the plan my plan is to have sergey do it i mean i just love his artwork and i love what what he's doing but yeah we have shown a couple that are a little bit more futuristic or a little bit more rare we have some rare rare ones that that may come down the pike and stuff like that. So we're working on it. Um, it's not 100% certain that he'll be the only artist on the project. But for now, I, I really, I, I'm, ha I'm like hope 
he is the guy. And if we do bring in other artists, hopefully it'll emulate or just, just uh, build off of what he's already created. That is really cool. That's just amazing. I mean, you're on a good network for it. I mean, Ethereum's only going to get better and better over the next six months. You know, they're moving from proof of work to proof of stake. It, there's going to be fewer and fewer fees. It's going to just everything's going to be working better, which is nice. But also, I mean, it sounds like you set up the scaffolding to really make something soar, which is which is just really exciting. I mean, especially as an artist, as a working artist for all these years, which I can totally relate to, and to make this leap into technology and go like, whoa, this stuff actually enables my stuff to grow. Like, it's not like you're, leave, you're abandoning art to go into tech. It's like you're finally having art-related tech. It's pretty awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm looking, uh, and uh, the other thing is that education wise for the photo community is I've always been an educator. So I'm trying to get the, the people, these photographers aware of this is another source of income for you. Hey, you know, look at what you're doing. I'm a portrait photographer. So it's, uh, I always, I look at it as, cause people ask me, well, do you have your work on foundation yet or anything like that? And I'm like, well, I shoot my clients for them. I'm not gonna, you know, unless I photograph right. somebody with a NFT in selling an nft in mind and we discuss it before the shoot that's a different ball game but me going back into my into my archives and seeing what's in there i really i mean i i'm sure there's things in there that would be amazing that i that are just sitting there that would be valuable for me and for a, another income stream so photographers have to go like like i was thinking the same thing i mean i have installation art like how it's so hard. it's impossible to sell installation art when you make non-object oriented art that's an experience how else do you sell it unless you photograph it, you video it, and then you repackage that. But now I'm like, oh, I've got, I've got, maybe I've got a lot of value just sitting back there, you know? And I hope that more artists that are hearing this are realizing that too, that, you know, this is really, this is an early, early time. I'm not saying, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow, or it's not going to take a slump in another year, but, you know, I've been through enough cycles in crypto now things come back around if they're well built and if they have a good community and they're well put together and they have a good solid foundation. I mean, you're, you're Shabucks. It sounds like a cryptocurrency that's going to be used. And if you, if you need some help with tokenomics, let me know I'm available. Cause that's what I do. I figure out how much you're supposed to put out when, for what reason, why, where do you price it at? Who gets it? What do they use it for? And then how you to deal with the securities laws around that. And if you're going to list it or not, I mean, I've, Shabucks might just only be in your metaverse, or are you going to list them on other exchanges so people can just like participate without participating? You know, you, you never know. There's so many options. It's a very wild wild west out there i just love that it's including more artists and photographers and creatives and folks that i think up until now have really been disenfranchised and forgotten and left out to be like that starving artist stereotype that they're somehow supposed to be which is ridiculous it's like if you can walk and tie and chew gum at the same time and maybe balance a checkbook you're no longer a creative and it's like ridiculous like having to cut your own ear off just to prove that you're a totally out of your mind creative is just, it's not something I like anymore. You know, it's, I'm, I hope that that's more and more a thing of the past because the crypto savvy NFT creator, uh, I hope who's making lots of money. I hope that's the stereotype of the artist in the future. <laughs> and I exactly. hope that's a stereotype of you as well. Rid the world of the starving part. Um, I have yeah. friends that are artists and I've been talking to them because they'll come to me because I'm kind of on the front of this thing, I guess, with what everything that's gone on. And I'd be like, you, this is the, like, I know I have a really good friend who just never listened to me. And he was like, you know, one of my muses when I picked up my camera and first started and we bumped into each other. That I was like, you know, I've been telling you to get your shit together for like years now. NFT do it full in now go let's get your he's got this beautiful work and it's all he was creating to draw our work when I when I back in the early you know 2000 right around when I picked up a camera I was like now everything you've got it you know so I'm like shaking people um so yeah. I think the more that we get out there on stuff like this and the more what is it the what's the deal like somebody has to hear something seven times before they go yeah. like oh what is that you know well, thank you for so. saying it at least once, if not a few times in this in this podcast. That's been awesome. And I hope that this is really inspiring to folks. I hope they go to Shebangers and they get a Shebanger and they, I mean, even if it's, I think of it this way, I hope that people educate themselves by engaging with these new technologies. If you took a class on it, you're guaranteed to lose 100% of your money in exchange for knowledge. But if you invest the money, you are not guaranteed to lose all of that money, even if it goes down a little. I mean, like it went down from 0.09 ETH to 0.06. Someone just spent 0.03 ETH to learn about NFTs and they still yeah. kept 0.06. I mean, 
It's a better it's a better deal than taking a class as far as I'm concerned. So investing is a good idea. This is not investment advice. I promise you that this is just my opinion, but I I love that I love your platform and I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. This is really cool and uh, I imagine that you're plugged in on lots, all of, all of them, Tel discord, telegram, everything, all of them are going to be in the show notes, anything else that people definitely need to know where they can find you or, or know more about you. I mean, I, you, you know, Peter Hurley.com is my website with my work on it, but, but Instagram, I'm Peter underscore Hurley. I answer every DM. So if anybody has any questions, just hit me up there and I have a link I about it. everything I do. So check it out. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, with that, I guess I'll just wrap it up. So this is Monica Profit signing off of the New Trust Economy. Thank you again, Peter, for joining us. You've been fantastic. Thanks, Monica. It was awesome. I loved it. And I, I loved know. our little chat beforehand. I knew too. it would be we good. Gotta stay in touch. We got to stay in touch. We will, definitely. All right. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.